Hello class, uh, if my voice sounds a little different, <clears throat> I'm recovering from a cold right now. And uh, one of the things I do sometimes, I, I around holidays too, I get into Harry Potter and I actually watched all the Harry Potter and I finished them last night. So, and, and funny enough, I've been starting to feel better. <laughs> so the power of magic, I suppose, lots of soup. So I hope you don't get sick. Uh, a lot of people seem to be getting this cold um, and it, it seems to linger. I, I It's not... I don't know. I, I've only had it for, let's see here, a week and a day. So hopefully I'm not in the lingering stage. We'll see, but I hope you're doing fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just, I just, I'm annoyed. I, I like to work out and I can't work out. I, I don't work out when I'm sick. Anyways, my, my article video this week is about two fun topics. Well, at least one that's fun, AI and cancer. Artificial intelligence, a lot of people think it's like the Terminator. What is artificial intelligence and how is it working? What do we consider artificial intelligence right now? Uh, very similar. Artificial intelligence is a type of, of, uh, is type of broader character, broader category we call machine learning. And uh, what artificial intelligence is, is basically prediction. So AI is, is about predicting things based off of data. So you train an AI with a bunch, with a huge amount of data sets, and then the AI gets this sort of quasi-intuition about things. And from this intuition, it can uh, make predictions, and it can make predictions very quickly. Sometimes it goes, does a good job. Sometimes it does a bad job. Sometimes, if it, especially if it's poorly trained, uh, one of the terms of data science, they say crap in and crap out. So it really just depends. And okay, then we're talking about cancer. Cancer is not one disease. So, I mean, it has the general idea, what is cancer? Generally speaking, cancer are malignant tumors. So tumor is a growth. You can have benign or malignant. Benign tumors either grow very slowly, not at all, all or even shrink. So that's what a, what a benign tumor is. And then a malignant tumor is one that grows more quickly. So cancer that's malignant has some problems because, uh, well, if you can see this image of the cancer right here, cancer cell, it all these these sort of... I don't know what you want to call those tendrils. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a medical doctor. I don't know you like vascularization. I, I don't know, but uh, it draws uh, uh, nutrition from surrounding tissues. That's one problem. The second problem is it grows, and as it grows, it puts physical pressure on the tissue around it, and that causes damage. So that's that's the danger of cancer. And cancer, it's hard for our immune system to find cancer because. It's from our own cells, but they're slightly mutated. So the, the, the I mean, it's, it's looks, so for our immune system, it looks very similarly to our own body. Uh, and there are many different ways to treat cancers. And uh, one of them, of course, I, I have a science crush on the, the company Moderna. One of the ways they're, they're looking to do is a biopsy of the cancer, and then they uh, attach a, a, an antibody that will be a genetic marker to help your body find that more quickly. And so that's one. And there's other companies that are doing something similar, not necessarily with mRNA technology. Some companies, for instance, are looking into training white blood cells to do this rather than going the antibody route via mRNA like Moderna is doing. So, I mean, our technology is getting better. And when you say you cure cancer, you, I mean, cancer is such a broad thing. There's so many different types of cancer. There's so many causes of cancer. There's so many treatments for cancer. So it's it's such a broad thing. Uh, it's it's like saying we're preventing death. I mean, there's lots of different ways to die. There's not the, lots of different ways to kill someone. There's lots of different ways to prevent someone from dying. So I mean, it's it's as broad as that with cancer. So cancer is such a huge and broad topic. Uh, but with this. It's combining that, and, and, and the, the article talks about uh, prostate cancer in the UK. So the, these data are from the United Kingdom, and, and, it, and this article talks about this and how they're using artificial intelligence to help 
screen cancer and identify cancer early. And I, early identification is a very big thing. I mean, if you have noticed, I'm a Caucasian. And as a Caucasian, I am, generally speaking, I'm slightly more susceptible to skin cancer. So I see a dermatologist every year and he looks over my body and makes sure I don't have any cancer or precancerous cells. And I, he did catch a precancerous cell one time and it was real easy. Just a little blip of liquid nitrogen and the precancer was gone. I mean, like that is so much better than having it turn into a malignant tumor and spreading there the rest of my body and then the kind of treatment I can go through. So how, how much the, the, the good old uh, saying and an, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's probably that's under underwhelming how much prevention really, really helps patients in preventing cancer. Of course, I mean, I didn't want to do the experiment like, ah, doc, just leave it. Let's see what happens, right? I, I didn't do that experiment, so I don't know, but I can only imagine. I, I'm right. I'm happy to, you know, go ahead and have the dermatologist remove the, the precancer when I'm not even at cancer stage, right? So, uh, and uh, this is something where we, where AI is important, where it's something that, that you have <clears throat> a computer program that can quickly screen a lot of people and also give a generalized opinion, if you will, the, the, uh, the output of the of the in this case biopsy so uh and uh and this and this article talks about this a little bit and <clears throat> i mean i i don't even want to think about prostate cancer Ugh. but uh and, uh and then the article talking about how they they check for it Ugh, i don't want to if it's uh it doesn't sound fun uh but uh it's it's um but either way uh, this is something that is generally improving the life of a human. So, I mean, we look at our technology, what it means, and, and where is science pushing? And uh, this is something, and, and AI, AI, and like, I know many people are, are, have various views. I love AI. I embrace it. I think it's a great thing. Uh, can it be misused? Absolutely. Uh, can we have bad AI? Absolutely. I mean, we have so much technology that, I mean, like, that, of course, bad actors. One of them, for instance, is um, the uh, polygraph. I mean, if you have a crappy polygraph operator and interviewer, the, the interviewer can make you believe anything, or at least say, like, say the, anything. And, and part of it is that's one of the reasons why it's a little dubious in court. So with the polygraphs and that, um, and the FBI I know does quite a bit with polygraphs and some of our um, government agencies, they rely a lot on polygraphs. And I went to see a polygraph dem demonstration. Well, one of them came to my, the FBI came to my classroom and, and did a demonstration and it, I mean, it works. It was, and it was very intimidating uh, to, to see. And uh, I mean, cause they, they were looking at the, the various, um, biological indicators about things and I, I mean but I mean if you have a very good and honest and honorable polygraph operator versus someone who's trying to manipulate the results you can get a crap result from a polygraph just like you can get a great result from a polygraph same thing with artificial intelligence so you can get crap results from artificial intelligence as well as good results or at least I mean as well as can be expected I mean, as we do these, a lot of these cancers, they're hard to find. But it's interesting. It's interesting where we see this. And I, I think it's great that we start doing more and more artificial intelligence into medicine, especially with how hard it is to train doctors. So it's really hard to train doctors. And this is a, a field that we really, really need more people in. So we need doctors. And we, well, we need good doctors. We don't just need doctors. I mean, I mean I'm a doctor. Well, I'm a PhD. But I mean, I would... Probably, I would be a terrible medical doctor. My, my understanding of biology is terrible. So I would not be a good medical doctor. Uh, so uh, even though I talk a big game about this cancer stuff, I'm like, but my, I'm, a, I'm really a physical scientist and I have, I have a very broad level of interest and, and this interest is where, where life is going. So either way, I, I, hope, I hope you enjoy the article and uh, you find it enlightening and think about how uh, our world is changing. Our world is changing so quickly. Uh, and <clears throat> I think we're going to see AI in many, many more aspects of our lives 
<clears throat> especially in medicine. We're already seeing in science, and it's it's uh, it's it's very useful. It's very useful. We already, I mean, of course, everyone thinks about uh, Chat GPT, uh, and Chat GPT is better than GPT three, which was the predecessor, and that was really eerie. And Chat GPT is even more. So I mean, we'll see what happens. And uh, I, like, I'm I'm not, I'm hopeful. I'm ex I'm fascinated. I'm not worried about it. So I I don't know what you're feelings are about it. And sorry for the long-winded discussion here. I wanted to kind of give a background of what cancer is and and what it means to have cancer and and how and like generalizing, I mean, well, how broad of a discussion topic it is. Um, <clears throat> I hope that you're well. I hope you don't get sick before uh, the finals. Um, which is kind of funny. I usually do get sick around this time of year, but it's usually after finals. I still get that. I, I mean, I've been, it's been since I'm a student. Once, once finals are over, for some reason, my body's like, guess what? It's time to get sick. So uh, I'm hoping now that I won't get sick uh, in mid-May uh, when, when everything is done. Uh, but uh, either way, I hope you stay well. Uh, if you're not well, uh, I mean, not just with uh, <clears throat> health and colds, but like um, if you're not getting your basic needs met, if you're dealing with crippling mental health issues, if you're having other academic problems or anything that you feel that you need help with, like, please let me know and, and I will do what I can to help out. Okay? Uh, sorry for the long video, but aloha and enjoy your weekend.